Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I'm doing a review for Arcadia by Ian Pierce. This is kind of a fantasy, science fiction, historical fiction book about books. Um, it's a lot of things all in one book. We're following multiple perspectives, but there are three main locations that we are following. Uh, the first one is 1960s Oxford. We also have kind of a futuristic uh, almost dystopian type world and then there's also this idyllic sort of like medieval fantasy world that we're following as well. And in each of these worlds we're following a few different uh, story threads. So in the uh, 1960s Oxford our main characters there are an older man who is an ex-spy and currently is an aspiring author, um, and then his neighbor who is a teenage girl that he has become friends with and she comes over and like feeds his cat. In the futuristic dystopian type society we are following um, a scientist who is working on a technology to either travel in time or travel between worlds. They're not really sure which one just yet. Um, and then also some large corporations who are trying to to take advantage of this technology that she is developing. And then in our fantasy-esque world we're following this boy who is learning to become a storyteller and in that world they don't really have gods, they have what they call the story and they worship the story and so storytellers are an extremely important and prestigious uh, status and so we're following this boy who is learning to become a storyteller. And so we're following all of these different threads of these stories and throughout the book we get to see how they all weave together. Um, and as I said this is a book about books, it's a book about storytelling, it has a lot of references to other stories and other books. So if you are a book lover, especially a lover of classic literature um, and like Shakespeare, you will get to see a lot of references within this. And like many books about books, it also has some elements of portal fantasies and the ability to travel into books and into stories. So there are a lot of aspects to this book, but I think that they are woven together really well and I personally didn't find it confusing but there is a lot of stuff to follow. One of the things that I think is really interesting about this book is there is actually an app that goes with this book and it has like a map of each character's timeline and you get to see like has the characters kind of interact and as their personal timelines come together or go further away from each other and it's really interesting. Before diving into the rest of the review I want to mention some content warnings especially for medical experiments, non-consensual pregnancy, and using talking about mental illness and drug use as a way of unlocking genius. But as I said, this is a story about stories and about storytelling and it has just layers and layers of stories within stories. It has lots of references to other stories and other literature, especially Shakespeare, uh, C.S. Lewis, and Lewis Carroll, and there were lots of other ones and I'm sure there are lots of things that I missed in this as well, uh, but I think that if you are, if you enjoy books that are about stories and books that reference other literature, special, especially classic literature, then you would probably enjoy like finding all of the easter eggs within this. I really enjoyed each of the settings that we had. It is one that like in this book you get like a historical fiction, you get like a sci-fi dystopian, you get a um, fantasy, you get a lot of books all within one book and I enjoyed each of the settings that we visited. Of course I think the kind of fantasy-esque one was my favorite but I'm a fantasy reader at heart so that's no surprise. But I think really each of the settings really had their time to shine and I did enjoy each of them. With so many settings and so many characters that we're following, this is a pretty slow book because we are jumping from one setting to another and really it takes a while to really get into the story and the flow of it and it takes a while to kind of start to see how these are weaving together. Um, I think there's a bit of a leap of faith for the first like 200 pages of this. It's about a 600 page book. Now that being said, like the two, first 200 pages I felt like I had no idea what was going on. I didn't really see how these were going to be woven together. 
even so, I was really enjoying the book. I felt like I have no idea what's going on, but I'm into it. I really enjoyed the writing of this and I was really interested by each of these worlds but it did make it a very slow book to get into and just a slow book overall because there are so many moving parts and they each need attention. So there were parts that definitely dragged. There were also parts of this where I felt like the author was kind of get in, getting into this like philosophizing about the nature of time uh, because there is a scientist who is trying to unlock time travel and so she would go on these like rants about the nature of time and time travel which sometimes were interesting sometimes they just seemed like the author was trying to convince you how smart the character was even though i already believed that she was really smart and that she was a really good scientist um so those were also some parts that like dragged a little for me when she would go off on these tangents kind of philosophizing about time but i feel like the real strength of this book is the way you get to see all of these stories and these characters and all of these threads weave together and come together. I thought that was really interesting. It was really clever. I think this was just very well written. Um, it's not one that I would say you really read for the characters. I did like the characters. I especially, I liked them at the beginning and I definitely got invested in them pretty early on, but I don't feel like the characters really deepened over the course of the book. And personally, character development is something that is really important to me in a story. Um, um, so I did like the characters and they were okay, but they weren't ones that I got really attached to because I don't feel like they really deepened or developed that much over the course of the story. But overall, I really enjoyed this and as I said, I think it was really well written and it was really uh, clever in the way that it wove all of these facets of the story together and I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. So that is all for my review of Arcadia by Ian Pierce. Thank you all for watching and until next time! Bye.